Hey, it's Deborah from createwithcompassion.com. I'm journey coach leader number 9395, and I love creating with compassion and Fun Stampers Journey products. The card I'd like to share with you today uses a couple of stamp sets from the Bloom This Way Mini. This card was created using beach ball, cardstock, and ink for the flowers, and some fresh forest for the greenery there. I also used some black embossing for the thank you sentiment there. The card I'm going to share with you today will use a few different colors just so you can kind of see the difference that changing the colors can make. The two stamp sets that we're going to use in this creation is Spring Botanicals. I love the flowers and the greenery and this arrow and they have done all of the artistic work for you by adding some shading and dimension to it. You can purchase the stamp set and the coordinating die individually or together as a bundle to save 10%. I won't be using the dies today but wanted you to know that they are there and available for you. The everyday script is from the Bloom This Way Mini as well which is live through March 2018. I just love these fonts. I love the size of the sentiments and a bonus there is a coordinating die set available to be purchased individually or as a bundle that will save you 10% which is a good awesome deal. The tag elements I will be using as well. This is my favorite AT set. I love using these little sentiments on the envelope because I think it offers a smile as soon as the recipient takes it out of that mailbox. And I like to think that maybe it gives the mail person a smile too as well. I'm going to use Watermelon Fusion cardstock for my card base. This is just 4 and a fourth by 11, so basically an 8 and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock cut in half and then fold it in half to make a standard card base which is four and one fourth by five and a half. Next I'm going to bring in this post-it note and my watermelon fusion ink and the big beautiful flower from Spring Botanicals. And I'm going to ink that up. I ink my stamps up by placing the block down with the stamp facing up and then I press my ink pad onto it and I like, I don't go fast. I like to give that ink a moment to transfer from the ink pad to the stamp set. So I go kind of somewhat slow and gentle yet firmly. So we're just going to stamp that in the middle of this post-it note. And then taking my scissors here, I'm going to trim out this beautiful flower right along the edge. Even it's okay if I go ever so slightly into the flower because I want the flower to be on top of the greenery that I'll be stamping so that the greenery looks like it's coming from underneath the flower. You don't want to use the dies for this. This is called masking because the dies have a nice border all around the image and so you would have I think it's maybe about a sixteenth of an inch or so border and so you would have a pretty decent gap between your beautiful flower and your greenery. So for this masking technique you usually, if not always, depending on what look you want of course, would use scissors to cut out right along the edge, if not a little bit um, on the inside of your image. Because when you have paper or anything covering an image, it creates, um, when you stamp on top of that, you've got a little bit of a layer between the cardstock you're stamping on and your stamp so it can give you a little bit of a um, space between your image that you are covering and the image that you are stamping. You may see that for example here on the card you can see there's a space between my image there and the greenery and that's because primarily I didn't uh, press hard enough along that image but the masking the post-it note kind of creates like a little shelf or whatever that the stamp needs to be pressed down against but it still is a beautiful effect there. So we're going to use that. This is a 4 by 5 and 1 4 piece of whipped cream cardstock. Whenever I use 
colored card basis I like to put a white panel on the inside so I'm going to stamp this beautiful flower with the watermelon fusion ink so I'll get that inked up once again and I'm going to put this beautiful flower down on the left side bottom corner of this cardstock and I'll set that aside I'm going to bring in a three and a half by five and a half piece of whipped cream cardstock and I will ink that beautiful flower up again with the watermelon fusion I always put the lid back on my ink pads because I don't want to risk um, setting something in it they're not going to dry out that fast but I can make a mess that fast so my first image is going to be in the upper left hand corner of that cardstock ink up this beautiful flower once again and this time it's going to be stamped on the middle right side and you can turn or rotate your flower so that it uh, gives it more of a unique look and kind of makes it look like a different stamp was used it was not just the same exact image moved throughout your cardstock so we've got that inked up again with the watermelon fusion and it's going to go down here in the bottom left corner and then what I'm going to do is move that off to the side and bring in my envelope and I'm going to ink it up again with the watermelon fusion I love having my envelopes coordinate with my cards you can do that by either kind of putting something in the bottom left hand corner or decorating your flap this would look beautiful if you wanted to put some flowers and greenery on the back flap as well all right I've got that three and a half by five and a half uh, card stock now with my three watermelon fusion flowers and I've got one of the little branches from the spring botanicals stamp set and I'm going to ink up I'm not too worried about the stem because I won't be using that just mainly the leaves so I will ink that up with the green olive ink bring in my um, mask and we'll get this lined up here let's see there we go and I don't have to worry about sticking it down completely I'm not going to be moving it around very much I'm gonna bring in some of this greenery up here in the top I'm gonna to leave that mask there because I'm gonna bring in some greenery going down and you can use a variety of the greenery you don't have to use just one of the greenery stamps you can definitely mix and match that greenery there we go and then let's cover up this flower here there we go and just cover that up ink up that stamp with green olive and I'm going to just kind of bring some in there on the edge and we're going to bring some in near the bottom make sure I'm lined up good and kind of stamp some down there then I'm gonna move my flower my mask here over there we go ink it up with green olive and I'm gonna bring some green up there and I'm gonna put just a little bit just just a little bit down there then the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to use that again in just a moment but I want to add some black licorice silk to this and I want that to have a chance to dry before I go in and do my um, sentiment there so what I like to do to keep my work surface clean because to me it seems like the silk dries a little bit quicker on my cardstock than my paper there so I just have a pizza style cardboard box 
place my cardstock in there and then I'm just going to shake up this black licorice silk. You can hear a metal ball in there. Just get that mixed up good because there is some shimmer and shine to the black licorice silk. So it has a little paintbrush there and I'm just going to put some kind of in the areas without the flower. And it's okay if some of my flowers get a little bit. In fact, let's see, I want a little bit more there. And I think that looks well, looks good. So I'm going to set that off to the side so that it can dry. And I'm going to bring in my four by five and a fourth piece and my green twig there and my mask. And we will get some greenery on this inside panel as well. Now you could uh, use a sentiment from another stamp set and add another sentiment to the inside or you can just keep it with the flower. You could use one of the tag elements if you wanted to. And I'm just going to add some more greenery there. That's beautiful. You have plenty of room to write your message. And I'm going to add a little bit of greenery to my envelope as well. So let's get this lined up here. And ink that up, green olive. I'm going to put just a little bit up here at the top. And then a little bit down here to the side. And then for my sentiment from the tag elements, I'm going to do love you and I'll use black licorice. Now with these really little ones, I tend to just tap the stamp onto the ink pad itself. Let's remove this. I'm just going to put it, I think, right about there. And my envelope is ready. Now we're going to do some heat embossing on this three and a half by five and a half panel. I've got some Versamark ink and the colorless blender. The colorless blender works very similar to like an embossing buddy. It helps to get rid of any oils or static that can make your embossing powder stick where you don't want it to. Fun Stamper's Journey does have a clear pigment ink, but I don't have it at this time. But I do look forward to getting it at another time. So I'll just be using the Versamark ink, which pretty much does the same thing. I'm just going to rub some of this clear um, pan pastel in the area. I'm going to put my sentiment kind of up in this area. So I'm going to rub that around there. And then we will ink up the Missing You sentiment from Everyday Scripts. Thought it would be nice to kind of do a Missing You card to give someone a smile and let them know that they are being thought of. So I'm just going to put that there at a slight angle. And it is a clear ink. So you're not going to see much right now. But when you add your embossing powder, you will see it. This is just some black embossing powder in a container there. And I'll flick off any extra. That is beautiful. If you do get any stray embossing powder, that's all right because you have that black licorice silk there so it kind of adds to the look but I don't see any stray embossing powder so I'm ready to use my heat gun and melt that embossing powder. I like to heat up my heat gun for a few moments before bringing the heat to the card. beautiful embossed missing you sentiment. Heat from embossing does warp your paper a little bit. Sometimes I'll put some of the heat on the back side of the paper and that seems to help a little bit. Now 
In this card, I did not sponge any of the edges of the cardstock, but I thought for this card I would. So I've got just about a fourth of a True Color Fusion sponge here from Fun Stamper's Journey. And I just tap that into the ink and then swipe it along the edge of my cardstock. And then I'm going to do the same thing to that panel for the inside. Time to put this card together. I've got the inside panel and some Easy Glide adhesive. Just going to add some along the edges there. Don't need to add a whole lot. This adhesive sticks pretty well and keeps your cardstock in place. I'm going to center this. If I get the three edges lined up pretty well, then I know that fourth will be lined up. You could add some of the black licorice silk there if you would like to. Now I've got this three and a half panel for the front and this, since the heat embossing warped it a little bit, I will add more adhesive to it because the cardstock will be working against the adhesive with all of that warping. And if you go over the edge, you just fold your adhesive back onto itself. So we'll go along the edges nicely there. The bottom is not as warped because I didn't have any embossing down on that side. And put a little bit in the middle. All right, I've got a piece of black licorice cardstock that's three and three fourths by five and a half. And we're just going to center that side to side, but it'll be flush up at the top. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn that over and press that down. And then I've got some of the Fun Stamper's Journey foam squares. These are the medium ones. Just going to put a few of those on the back here and we'll pop this panel up on the front of our card and then our card is done and it's ready to go to someone to bring them a smile to brighten their day. If you have any questions about Fun Stamper's journey just don't hesitate to contact me. You can contact me at Deborah at create with um, dot com. That's my email address, or you can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Create with Compassion, or um, Deborah Denise. You'll find me on Facebook. So we'll get all of these peeled off. And this centered side to side, but it'll be flush at the top and the bottom there. It looks like I have some of that adhesive that I didn't fold really well. So I'm just going to take my scissors here and trim that adhesive off. There we go. That's better. All right. So I'll get this lined up side to side, flush up at the top. Place that down straight. Here's a side-by-side -side view of the two cards. To me, the different colors give it kind of a slightly different feel. And as you can see, both sentiments look great on that card. I love it. Thank you for watching this video today. I appreciate the time that you have shared with me. I'm here to be a Fun Stamper's Journey resource for you, so please don't hesitate to contact me. You can email me at Deborah at createwithcompassion.com or find me on Facebook, Create with Compassion or Deborah Denise, as well as leave a comment below this video and I will respond. You can shop and purchase all of the supplies needed to create these cards at my website www.funstampersjourney.com forward slash create with compassion. You'll find a link for all of the supplies used in the description below this video or on my blog createwithcompassion.com. Thank you so much and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye.